Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to actually measure the relationship. What we want is a measure of the goodness of fit. We want to know how well our regression line, the model, fits the real data. Now, remember the regression line. Let me draw a scatter plot. So you have your x-axis, your y-axis, some observations, and you have your scatter your least squares line. Okay, as you can see, not all points are directly on the line. So in other words, our independent variable x doesn't perfectly explain the variation of y. So x doesn't perfectly explain y. Some points are below and some points are above the line. The distance from the line of every single data point. So imagine I did that for every single, oh, let's do this. Let's actually do that for every single data point. So the distance, away from the regression line this is what we call or these are what we call residuals um, so we need some measure that accounts for these residuals and gives us a figure of how many residuals are left or in other words uh, how much of the variation in our data is explained and how much is not explained and the measure we are looking for is called the coefficient of determination and it is abbreviated by r squared that is because um, um, R, is, R squared is nothing more than the correlation coefficient R squared. Um, so because we are squaring a value between minus 1 and 1, this is the, the these are the numbers R can take, um, we'll always get a number that is between that is between 0 and 1. Um, what does that number say? Well, if R squared is, actually, is equal to 0, our model doesn't explain anything. There would be absolutely no relationship between the variables. On the other side, if R squared is equal to 1, every, every, the, the entire variation of our dependent variable can be explained by our independent variable. In reality, neither of both will happen. So there, is always, there are always some residuals left, and if you ever get an R squared of 1, you should see this as an indicator for mistake. And the same goes for an exact um, a value of 0. So the basic idea of regression analysis is we have an independent variable, uh, or a, sorry, a dependent variable that shows variability, and we would want to explain this variation with an independent variable or with a set of independent variables. Or in plain English, we have y, and we want to explain that with the help of x. And um, what I want you to do next is think about the following question. What would be the best guess for the value of a dependent var variable y? So you have y and it ranges between 0 and 1, uh, 0 and 100, sorry. And what would be the best guess if you would have no idea about the factors determining the value of y? What would be the best guess? Well, the best guess would be the mean. So if you have the mean of y, so y bar, that is the mean, you would, uh, th this would be the best guess. But we don't have to do that because we actually have a clue of the factors determining the behavior of our dependent variable. We have the independent variable x, for example, that uh, helps us um, predict or actually helps us explain the value of y. So we have the value or the variable x we can explain why with. So what we would do is a simple scatter plot. So let's not put in that many observations. So let's make it look like this. And you would put in the regression line. So it might look something like this. Okay, now let's see how, by how much we were able to improve the situation. Let's take one example. So let's take this data point right here, okay? So the distance from the main line to the regression line, so the, this, the distance right here, this distance, this is the actual improvement we made, but there is still some space between the regression line and our actual data point. This is still unexplained variation. So the yellow part right here, this is unexplained or still unexplained variation while we were able to explain that much with x. So this is explained variation. And of course, the same goes for every single data point that there is. Um, so we have some explained variation and some unexplained variation. And um, how does that um, interact with the measure of fit? Um, well, think about the following. 
Um, what would be the total variation be uh, equal to? So you have the um, the sum of the total variation. So if I would sum the entire variation of every single data point, so every data point has some variation, and uh, I, um, I if I would square it, um, so what is the sum of the total variation equal to? Well, it's equal to the sum of the explained variation plus the sum of the unexplained variation. Because um, these two constitute the entire variation. Okay? Um, and again, how does it how does R square fit into that? Um, well what R square does is let's let's get some room over here. So what R square does is simply it takes the the sum of the explained variation. So it looks okay. How much explained variation do we have in the scatter plot? So it looks at every single data point, it adds together the explained variation, and it divides it by the sum of the total variation. And that would be equal to R squared, the coefficient of determination. Now imagine the following case. Imagine that would be equal to 0.61. Now, what does that tell you? Well, it says that 61% of the variation is explained by the regression and that 39% is left unexplained. Well, I would argue that 61% is pretty good. So you see, R squared is very important if you want to know whether you have a good model or not. Um, let, let's imagine the following case. Imagine you would be able to explain everything. So how would R squared of 1, what would that look like? Well, it would look something like this. So we have a scatter plot of x and y. And again, we have the mean of y. And then you would put in the data points and it would be a straight line. It would look something like this. Because when you fit the regression line, the um, data points are lying exactly on this regression line and there would be no unexplained variation left. The entire, we were able to explain everything with that. So we have an R squared of one because the explained variation is equal to the total variation. And if you, div for example, let, let's take a simple example. Um, let's imagine the sum of the explained variation right here is equal to let's say 10 and let's say the entire of the total variation is equal to 10 as well what would happen if you would divide 10 by 10 well it would be equal to 1 so um, we would be able to explain um, the total or we, 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 there's no variation left to explain there's no unexplained plane variation so the the the, ex, the the sum of the explained variation is equal to the sum of the total variation and that is why r squared would be equal to 1 but again this is a case you will never encounter in reality okay um so um, you see, R squared is very important if you want to know whether you have a good model or not. Um, and the thing to take away from this lesson is R squared ranges between 0 and 1 and basically tells you how good your model is. 0 says your model is useless in explaining the variation of the dependent variable with the ver variation of the independent variable or variables and that there is no relationship at all. And one says that your model perfectly explain, explains the variation of the dependent variable. This is what R squared tells you.